So this video is actually going to be a couple of different uh, playlists. So this video is going to cover how to conduct and interpret a Pearson correlation hypothesis test using SPSS. You might have also gotten to this video through the chapter 15 lecture for my stats class. So either one, this is going to show you how to do a hypothesis test using SPSS. So first I just wanted to briefly talk about what the Pearson correlation is measuring. So the Pearson correlation is the value R, um, is the Pearson correlation. And what R measures, what the Pearson correlation measures, is it examines the degree to which your two variables are varying together, which is also known as the covariance. So covariance is just the degree to which changes in X are associated with changes in Y. That's what covariance is standing for. So the degree to which changes in one are associated with changes in the other. And that's it's a ratio of the covariance over the extent to which X and Y vary on their own. So the degree to which people are different on X from each other and the degree to which people are um, different on Y from each other. So it's a measure of the covariance compared to just the overall variability for those two variables. And you should use the Pearson correlation analysis. You should use the hypothesis test specifically to examine whether the relationship between two variables, um, whether there is a relationship between two variables that are measured on an interval or ratio scale. So you'll notice the word linear in this explanation, and that word linear is fairly important because the Pearson correlation, it only identifies the extent to which your variables form a straight line. So that would be a straight line either slanted up, like a positive correlation, or it could be a straight line slanted down, like a negative correlation. But those two are the only types of relationships that are examined in a Pearson correlation. There are other more advanced statistics that can be computed to look at other types of correlations, but I'm not going to be talking about those in this video. So we're just going to focus on the extent to which two variables are forming a straight line kind of relationship or linear relationship. And we're primarily going to be focused on variables that are measured on an interval or ratio scale. You could basically just think of that as your variable involves numbers or is measured on a numerical scale. So what our hypothesis is actually testing, it's testing the R statistic. So it's testing the actual value of R that's associated with your data set. And it's examining whether or not your correlation or the val that value of R from your data set is significantly different from zero. So remember that when we have a zero correlation, what that means is that there is no correlation between our two variables. So an R of zero means no correlation. So our hypothesis test is going to examine if the obtained correlation is significantly different from zero or not. So let's go through an example of a hypothesis test that we can use to examine uh, the correlational sort of analysis. So in this example, we want to know if the number of alcoholic drinks consumed is related to flirting behavior. So we need to know a little bit more about how these variables are measured in order to make sure that we're needing to do a Pearson correlation. But you'll notice in this example, the question just asks you about a relationship. So are these two variables related to each other? Is there a relationship between the two variables of number of drinks consumed and flirting behavior? So in this example, the first variable that's measured, or the first variable that's mentioned is number of drinks. The second variable that's mentioned um, is flirting behavior, and more specifically in this study, it was measured by examining the number of people that somebody flirted with. So in this study, the researcher measured how many alcoholic drinks each person consumed in a bar, 
and they also measured the number of people they flirted with in a bar. So each person is measured on both of those variables. So each person was measured on how many drinks they consumed and also the number of people that they flirted with. So you'll notice that each of these two variables is indeed on a ratio scale in that uh, they both are measured in terms of how many numbers of things that people had. So we'll use the Pearson correlation to examine the relationship between these two variables. And so let me show you in SPSS how to do this. So here's our SPSS data file that has the data representing the number of people that uh, were flirted with and the number of drinks that were consumed. So I just made up these data, so don't make too much of it, but uh, this is just to be used as an example. It's not real data. But in order to do this analysis, we'll first go with this Analyze drop-down menu. And to do the correlation, the Pearson correlation, it seems probably pretty obvious at this point, but we're gonna select the correlate um, option here. And then from correlate, it's a less obvious choice, but the one we want to choose is bivariate. So bivariate just refers to the fact that we have two variables that we're trying to correlate with each other. So again, in this example, we're trying to correlate the number of drinks consumed and the number of people flirted with. So we'll select that option. All you need to do now is just find your two variables in your list and move them over into the variables box. You can always switch the uh, view of your variables here by selecting display variable names. That might make it easier to find the variables you're looking for. But I'm looking for the relationship between the number of drinks consumed and the number of people flirted with. So we'll just move our two variables over into that variable box and then just press OK. It's very simple. So here's our output from the correlation from SPSS. So I'm actually going to copy and paste this table into a PowerPoint presentation to make it easier to look at. But we just get that one piece of output from our correlation. So let's talk about how to interpret that. So we just talked about how to actually run the analysis in SPSS. And um, before I actually tell you how to interpret the output, we're going to go through the hypothesis test procedure. So if any hypothesis test, the first step in that process is going to be to actually state your hypotheses that you're testing. So we're always actually just testing the null hypothesis so that H subscript O is representing our null hypothesis. And even though the test statistic we're using in this chapter or in correlation analyses is the R test statistic, we're always hypothesizing about the actual population level. So the way we're going to represent the population correlation here is by using the small Greek letter rho, which actually looks like a P, but that's what that that symbol is right here is actually the the small rho um, in a Greek letter. What that is symbolizing is the population level correlation. So essentially our null hypothesis is that the correlation in the population between these two variables is zero. Again, anytime we have a zero correlation, that means there is no relationship. So that's our null hypothesis for this analysis. And our alternative hypothesis for this analysis is that rho or the population correlation is something other than zero. It's not equal to zero. So there actually is a correlation. So as I mentioned earlier, we're essentially just testing the correlation that's identified in our sample. And we're examining, is that correlation zero or not? So we're always testing this null hypothesis that assumes it's zero. And we're looking for proof that this is wrong. So let's set up our criteria for how we're going to make our decision. So in step two, the things we want to report are first our alpha level. So our alpha level is how wrong we're willing to be. Essentially, how, how, how much chance 
difference are, or how much chance relationships are we expecting to be acceptable? So an alpha level of 0.05 represents that 5% of the time, we're just going to get that value for a correlation just by chance alone, even if there is no relationship. The two-tailed refers to the fact that we're just looking for any type of correlation. We're not trying to specify either a positive or negative correlation. So I'm only going to go through an example using a two-tailed hypothesis test because that's really what SPSS tests is a two-tailed test. Know that you can do a one-tailed test in um, a correlation as well, but primarily the default is going to be the two-tailed test, so we're going to focus on that. One major thing that changes for the correlation is the degrees of freedom. So in all previous chapters, we talked about measuring degrees of freedom uh, with the formula n minus 1. For correlation, it's actually going to be n minus 2. So since we're dealing with output from SPSS, we can actually get the value for n by looking at our SPSS, out, SPSS output. So I'm going to do that now. Um, so n is just our sample size. So in looking at our SPSS output, you'll see that actually there are a bunch of different um, column or blocks, I guess, um, here. Uh, we want to look for the combination of our two variables. So you'll see our columns here are each of our two variables. We've got number of drinks and number of people flirted with. We also have each of those on the rows here. So we have rows for the number of drinks and the number of people flirted with. You'll see right here that the value for this Pearson correlation is exactly one, and that's because this is measuring the correlation between number of drinks and number of drinks, which makes no sense. It's the same, it's the same variable. So of course, the number of drinks consumed is exactly the same as the number of drinks consumed because it's the same variable that box is actually quite useless. So instead, what we want to look for is we want to look for the combination of our two variables. So we got number of drinks in this column and number of people flirted with in that row. So we want to look for the, the um, boxes that are the combination of our two variables. You'll also probably notice that these boxes are exactly the same as those boxes it is very redundant in that it repeats the exact same information in these boxes as these boxes. So you only need to look at one of them because it's the same bit of information. Why it presents it twice, I cannot tell you, but make sure to just focus on one of these uh, boxes that represents that combination of your two variables. So be sure to look for your n in the boxes that is corresponding to the combination of your two variables. And the reason for that is that sometimes you might have different ends across these different boxes because one of your variables might have missing data. So to get the most accurate sample size, make sure to look at the combination of your two variables there. So the n in this example is 30. So taking that back to our equation, um, for degrees of freedom, we just take that 30, subtract 2 from it to get our degrees of freedom of 28. So all of this information is useful when looking up your critical value for the Pearson correlation. So if you are in my class, you have access to this information, this table on Blackboard. So make sure to open it up and look at it with me. In this next slide, I'm going to provide a copy of just part of this table. So we're going to take that information from the last slide and use it to find our critical value for the Pearson correlation. So let's look for our degrees of freedom here. We just calculated that in the, the last slide to be 28. So we'll look for the degrees of freedom of 28. And then here, the column that we want to look for is the level of significance, which is just our alpha level. So whatever our alpha level is, and whether it's a one or two tailed test, we were going through an example of a two-tailed test, so we'll look for an alpha of 0.05 in two tails. So that should give us that value for our critical value for R, for the Pearson correlation. So 
we'll graph that in the next video.